Owning a property has always been a dream of ours and um, almost 10 years we've been looking and uh, financially we haven't been able to actually pull the trigger until this past year. And it's always been kind of a dream to have a property where you can manage, you know, go out there and plant food plots and do anything you want. So um, building property around mature white tills is something we're really excited about. We're bringing up AWS, Andy Orr, and uh, we're gonna get the job done. My name is Andrew Orr and I'm the owner of Advanced Whitetail Systems and we design whitetail farms all over the Midwest. I started Advanced Whitetail Systems because I have a great love for helping guys design farms, helping them turn their farm into what their dream is. You know, no one really cares whether I can kill big deer, they want to kill big deer themselves. They want to kill them on their land, whether they have 20 acres or 1,000 acres. They want to improve their land and be able to harvest great bucks on their land and really at the end of the day that's what I love about this business. So Andy has an encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to mature whitetail bucks and creating properties that can hold them and eventually you know, harvest them. And uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can do right if you do it by yourself, but there's a lot of things you can do wrong when you do it by yourself. And those the things you do wrong sometimes are irreversible. So it's really important to bring Andy up, have a good plan in place to start and uh, go from there. So you know, Andy's the guy, we have him up here and we're excited to get rolling on this project. One cool thing about this whole video series is we're going to document from start to finish on how we can build a whitetail property that holds mature bucks. And one of the cool things is it may take two, three, four, five years to get that job done and we're just going to bring the viewer along for the whole ride, whether it's planning, implementation, the hunting, just watching these deer grow and, and hopefully the, the end result is something that we can be real proud of. One of the goals of this series is to just educate on some of the tips and tactics that you can use on a property that you hunt. So Andy's up, we're looking at maps and we're really just trying to analyze what the property has to offer in its current state. So we began the process today at the Ducarts, working to understand what's available on the farm for raw materials, for hinge cutting, for food plots, for ponds, for areas that we want to bed deer and understanding that process and beginning to formulate a plan. That's, that's really one of the key principles here is not get ahead of yourself. This is a time when everyone wants to rush. That's one of the worst things that happens in projects like this is you can get way ahead of yourself and then you realize later that you made mistakes, you wasted tens of thousands of dollars, time, energy. Taking the time now to make a great plan, an effective plan that we know will work is you know, absolutely critical for your potential of the farm later. You really want to concentrate on putting together a great plan from the beginning. One of the most important steps in the process of creating this property and building it from scratch is definitely the planning. So at first, we're looking at maps, we're trying to figure out features, the good things that are there, the bad things that are there, kind of how the property works right now, and try to figure out what we want to do in the future to hold deer and keep them from leaving the property. Yeah, so we're super excited. As you know, I've been texting you a little bit. We just purchased this property. We've never owned anything in our lives. And uh, yeah, studied a lot on Google Earth and on maps. And now it's time to put some feet on the ground and see what we can do there. Figuring out the, con you know, the condition of the timber will be important. Um, are you guys interested in possibly logging some of the timber uh, to, to offset your costs of your habitat work? Yeah, we talk about that for sure because I it's like JJ said, we've never owned a piece of property in life. The massive sizes of those trees are just unbelievable. And so I brought that up right away to Chris and JJ and said, hey, maybe we can, you know, do selective timber cutting out of here to offset mm -hmm. some of the costs. You know, they'll cut the trail on, you know, and then we kind of strategically figure yeah. out 
it can be amazing because especially if there's mature timber on that property like that that can completely offset all of your habitat work to to create a great deer hunting farm you know and and really be a fantastic I did, we did a farm in Davenport last year the the landowner made eighty five thousand dollars in logs on top of his habitat work and all the hinge cutting being you know basically free on top of that so let me ask you a couple questions what what are your goals start start with like as far as as deer do you want to kill a lot of deer do you want to kill a lot of, of good bucks do you want to try and grow super upper age structure bucks really old bucks what are your goals i think it, in my opinion if we could hold two target bucks without losing either one of them mm -hmm. every year um, between the the two sections i mean i think that's That'd be a pretty good goal. Well, I'll tell you what, that's that's definitely an area we can help you in significantly because what AWS does more than anything is divide a property into zones all over the place of food, quality food, water, and hinge cutting, and, and eating and, and resting areas so that they are willing to tolerate each other. It's exactly the same principle as a city. You know, why are people willing to tolerate each other in such close proximity in a city? Well, it's because of the amenities. It's because of what they can get. You can see on this map, it's exactly what we're trying to do here with these food plots. They're, you know, they're distributed throughout the farm so that you're creating an area where, hey, okay, now a mature buck can live in this area, live within 100 yards of this food plot, and he just doesn't have to go to any other place because he's got everything he needs here. He's got water, he's got several kinds of food, got hinge cutting all around it. You know, 250, 300, 400 yards away, we've got the exact same thing, the exact same thing, the exact same thing. So you create these concentration of areas that, that are highly valuable to mature bucks and they're willing to stay in those areas. And then as your rut develops and the deer start to move and look for does, those bucks have to check all these areas because these are areas of concentration. So you get much more effective movement on the farm as well and that's what we'll be looking to create. And it's, it's a really interesting property because they're, two, they're fundamentally two very different properties really. You've got mature timber on the western side, uh, you know, heavy, heavy timber. And on the right side, you've got open fields with cedars and uh, looks like timber that's been logged sometime in the last 15 to 20 years. That'll be something for you guys in this process, I promise you, you'll find very interesting, is seeing the differences in the way those two properties function because they'll function completely differently for white-tailed deer. We wrapped up the mapping portion. Now we're gonna head out to the property, get our boots on the ground, and really analyze those certain key elements in person. A lot of times things look a lot different in real life than it does in mapping, so we're headed out there and we're gonna look at some of those important aspects to building this property. Well, we had our uh, meeting yesterday at Illusion, um, taking a look at the property, you know, on the aerial views and whatnot, and it's great to be out today. We're kind of looking at general tree condition, uh, trying to understand what's here for resources on the property, you know, what we can utilize for hinge cutting, some of the, you know, potential food plot areas and just general condition of the property. It's fantastic to see it. It's a real diverse property. Um, I think there's a lot we can do with it to really, really improve it. So. It's great to be out here. You guys excited? Negative 17 yeah. degrees. <laughs> Beautiful morning. Yeah, all right, well, let's get to it. Let's look around. So the property as a whole is about 120 acres. 30% of it is open, meaning we can put food sources in there and just a lot of diversity in there. So, you know, cedars are popping up. We have honeysuckle, a lot of sumac, just a lot of diversity out in those open areas, wild grasses, some fruit trees. There's two natural streams running through it. There's water sources, a lot of bedding areas, some knobs, you know, a lot of things to build off of. And that's what was really attractive about this property. We got a lot of great diversity in here already. We got a lot of honeysuckle. A lot of that popple on the edge that can be brought out into here to accentuate that and create a lot of food through here. And then if you combine that with a feed plot and a pond, you know, it could end up being a really nice situation. We'll just have to start with the planning phase and understand if this is going to work as far as you guys being able to approach this spot and hunt it effectively without ghosts and deer. And the area definitely has a lot of potential and we'll definitely try and take advantage of areas like this because it can save you a lot of money and does or work and everything else if you can utilize your, the openings you already have.
So we're looking through this flat. I mean, this is a good community bedding type of area through here. We can do some loose hinge cutting in here. We've got a lot of this uh, younger red oak, maybe 20, 25 year old red oak. It'll hinge cut pretty effectively and a lot of popple in here. The popple we can cut off low and it'll re-sprout all around on the ground and everywhere. And that's good food too, you know? So this is pretty good cover in here for some loose hinge cutting for community bedding. It was really beneficial to walk through the timber with Andy and kind of look at the different species, the different you know age structures of that different sections of woods on this property, and kind of he explained how you know some trees hinge better than others and some trees work better for bedding areas. So understanding all of that before you know in the planning process really makes a big difference in the end too. So that was really beneficial walking through and just seeing what was available. So a great tip is this process is happening is trying to understand naturally in your area what trees um, do the deer prefer to eat. You know, when they're younger baby trees and stuff, a lot of times you can immediately focus on, hey, look, they're eating this popple or they're eating this aspen or they're eating this elm or this red oak or whatever it is, trying to understand somewhat, somewhat what they're eating already so that you can focus more on hinge cutting those kinds of trees and understanding, hey, this is gonna be an effective food for the deer in my area. Walking around the dew carts this morning, I saw a tremendous amount of potential in uh, areas for hinge cutting. And there's a lot of open areas already, a lot of weedy goldenrod areas that'll be fantastic food plots, very beautiful, diverse habitat. We'll work hard to maintain the aesthetic beauty of the property while we're implementing this plan because it has a lot of beauty already and I don't want to change that too much. The property has a lot of potential. There's a lot of food that can be put on the ground there, a lot of cover that we can expand and, and enhance for those whitetails that are there and the whitetails to come. And then as I spoke with uh, the Ducarts earlier, you know, we'll be in a phase for three or four years as we load the farm with deer where we won't harvest any does. So it's an exciting project. We're going to get to take you guys step by step through this entire process. This will be, you know, starting from scratch on a raw farm and showing all the things that we can do to take this farm from just a piece of property all the way to, you know, a very, very significant high-end whitetail farm holding the, the best upper age structure bucks we can, having them harvest them in an effective way, and that's gonna be an exciting process, and there's dozens of things that come into play, and um, you know, following along on that path and learning about that will be a very interesting process, so follow along. So the Deer Society is actually owned by myself, my brother Chris, and my, my dad Mike, and you know, having this property and kind of building it together it's, it's going to be a project that's going to have a lot of ups and downs, hopefully more ups than downs, but one of the most rewarding things about going through this whole process is actually that we get to do it as a family. The Ducarts don't know it yet, but this process is going to change them. It's going to change the way they feel about land. It's going to change the way they feel about that piece of property, and it'll change them as people. Uh, this is an amazing process they're beginning into. And when you put that kind of work and effort and care into a property, improving that habitat, um, doing all that work and all those different projects on the farm and improving and improving with that focus on you know striving for a better and better farm. When you finally kill deer off that farm and start getting trail camera pictures of great deer, it's just your satisfaction level is just absolutely through the roof. And they're doing this as a family. And uh, to watch that to watch that unfold is going to be an amazing process. I've seen this many times, and they're headed down an amazing road. They just don't know it yet.